Hello and welcome back to StarCraft and today we are going to be playing around with invulnerability and <laughs> you may have gotten more than a few uh, very angry messages earlier after playing around with this this particular strategy and pissing off uh, some members of the community so we're just going to be showing off uh, exactly what this strategy is and uh, I think you guys are going to like it so there is no exploit here there is no super shenanigans this is an intended part of the game this ability to make invulnerable units and it's uh, it kind of makes a lot of people angry so we'll we'll get to get to see some of that here probably I hope uh, looks like we already spawned let's go ahead and get the upgrades here now I'm not gonna be doing Something like throwing the teammates under the bus. I am going to be building a strong front line and making sure that we own the middle so that everyone reaps the benefit of getting the additional income and, you know, play my part as a team before going and jumping right into the, the memes here. So let's go ahead and get one more of these guys then. Go up to tech level two, a pretty, pretty normal start. We are playing as Karak, so we have these sentinel zealots, the kind that resurrect upon death. So it's really a very, very strong start here. Now, I don't actually know who my counterpart is just yet. They haven't spawned anything. Um, I know they're the light green color, which is the these guys here. Uh, it's a spore crawler and a spine crawler, which makes it... Uh, it was two spore crawlers and a spine crawler. I think Abathur, I think. And he just hit tech level two. So maybe he's going aircraft, which works in my favor. Uh, let's suppose we'll we'll find out probably this wave. It's Kerrigan. Okay, I was wrong. It's Kerrigan. I can work with that. So what we're going to be doing here is dealing with a Kerrigan unit. Um, I need to actually have a stronger ground force here to make sure that we can deal with the hero unit here. There we go. Just just zealoted out that's pretty strong pretty strong garrigan there that's uh it's real unfortunate for my zealots and now my, my alarak friend got wrecked by nova for it well i suppose that's not a big surprise whenever there's a massive power swing on one end let's go ahead and put down our shield battery uh you go here try to help out the uh photon turrets come on there it is there we go Okay, now I don't want to gas just yet because we do not own the middle at this point. And uh, let's me go ahead and explain what this particular invulnerable strategy is. So, Karax has access to the Mirage, which, as you guys remember, is basically a phoenix, but has some modifications to it. In this case, the modification is has the ability to access phasing armor, which uh, makes it invulnerable for 1.4 seconds on hit, and then has a 3.6 second cooldown. So, hmm, if we get these, they become invulnerable whenever they get shot, which is kind of super good, like infuriatingly good. Now, the downside to these is they can only shoot aircraft, or they can only shoot things in the air, but they do also have access to the regular Phoenix Graviton Beam, which lifts things into the air, where the, where the Mirages can then shoot them down. So let's go ahead and get the phasing armor. Then also the advanced repair systems, which enables these to be repaired, uh, or more of them to be repaired at once for 10 HP per second. So when they get hit, they go invulnerable and then get pretty much healed up to full, and then uh, the process repeats. And when we have a bunch of them, they just lift everything to the sky, and everything becomes difficult for whatever is here. So we're just going to lift up these queens, prevent them from using their abilities and all their heals, uh, shoot them down. I... Do yeah, there we go. Under the time the queens go away, so this Kerrigan suddenly won't be able to to get healed, and now everything is gonna disappear. Isn't that great? We could do the same thing to this next wave, but I don't think we have any lifts off cooldown. Yeah, so they're just gonna walk over here and die. Hey, a lift came off cooldown, and a marine goes away for it. Nice. So now I'm just gonna play a kind of uh, support role for my teammates. Rather than dealing direct damage myself, I have some zealots to clear out everything on the ground, and then my mirages to clear anything in the air, and then whenever they're finished in the air, they will start clearing out things on the ground, and we already have an Artanis ability coming out, which is going to make the, uh, we're going to make them win this particular exchange, so I'm going to have my work cut out for me. 
I do not believe my wave is capable of dealing with this. High Archons have Psyonix Storm, which may cause some issues for me in the near future. But it looks like we'll be all right here. Okay, so he's got a lot of Hydralis, which is going to be difficult for me to deal with. However, I can counter by building a lot of Zealots. Uh, for as much as fun as invulnerability is, it's only so useful when you don't have... Um, the uh, ability to destroy anything or to do anything on the ground and hydras have significantly higher dps to such a degree that the uh, phoenixes just they won't they won't be able to to do anything to the hydras and the hydras will just kind of kill everything and it will be bad so let's go ahead and get a bunch more of zealots and then go back to to bringing out the the phoenix memes at some point we can in fact get enough mirages to deal with all of the hydras just lift them all into the sky or at least even if we lift like 90 percent of them into the sky it'll it'll be worth because then the, the zealots can come over and clean up the rest of them and here we should be able to do pretty much just walking over it and lift up enough of the wave that the zealots can do whatever they so please and wipe everything out. Look at, look at the zealots just starting on one side and actually starting on all sides and going down the list. There we are. One, a couple of zealots left, and there we go. Neat. Now we're just gonna push forward, so I'm gonna get some more zealots. There we go. And then I wanna get some more mirages. And we should be able to completely wipe everything out here. Uh, looks like we're getting some phoenixes here out of the. Uh, out of the enemy. So we're gonna go ahead and clean those up real quick. There we go. And we push forward. My allied Zagara wave should have a much, much easier time of cleaning this up. In fact, these are both the same player Zagara, so the Zagaras are stacking, which is something you don't see very often. Let's go ahead and get plus one ground weapons. And then a simulator just to help with our zealots in <laughs> cleaning up the rest of these waves. Oh, oh. And for our for our help in stacking with the Zagara, the, the Zagara has cleaned up the Kerrigan for us, and now we're just going to sit on this this photon cannon and blow it away. These guys got to come over here and just do do mirage things, just whatever nonsense you want to do of just chilling over over within range of the Nexus for like a near infinite amount of time, lifting things up and blowing them away. If you if you want to do that, just yeah, you do mirage things. It's that's not that shouldn't be allowed. This is a very uh, angry, salty point of contention for a lot of members in the community because they're just infuriating to deal with. Even if it's only temporary invulnerability, it's still enough to cause whatever thing is shooting at the Mirage to retarget somewhere else, to incur a retargeting time, and then to have that Mirage free to carry on with its life as it so pleases. And yes, as you've seen with things like just going mass ground, they're able to deal, there are ways of somewhat dealing with it, but it's still an infuriating tactic to deal with. So we're gonna have to, ooh, I need to scan here. I need an observer, because these lurkers are going to cause problems. Or we could just lift them out of the ground every time and, okay, well, uh, I guess they're not gonna cause that much of a problem if they're not in, if they're not able to burrow, because they get lifted, so that's, it's, okay, that's, there goes that issue. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get some more mirages because doubling down on the salt makers, they are uh, probably a good idea. It's probably not a good idea, but it's a fun idea, and I like the idea of watching the enemy's waves struggle to deal with it. Uh, one of the other side effects of these mirages is that they live for so extraordinarily long that it forces everyone to deal with them. Like, look at this. This player here, this Artanis player, is building phoenixes against a wave that doesn't have any aircraft. Like, there's no reason to build phoenixes other than to try to contest my mirages. And as you can see, it's not working out very well, but it, that is money spent to deal with my wave, a wave that he isn't lined up against. So that's key. It's, it's just, it, it incurs a very hefty penalty upon all the enemies everywhere. And look at this, he's going for Double Raven. Double Raven actually works pretty well against the uh, Mirages because the first Raven will cast a Seeker Missile, which will trigger invulnerability on each one of these. Then the second Raven will cast a second uh, Seeker Missile, which splash damages all of the Mirages for a pretty hefty amount. Now, of course, the Mirages will heal up, but it is a strategy to work against these Mirages. 
So we'll we'll see if he's managed gonna manage to uh, gonna manage to pull it off at some point. I'm gonna go ahead and get some more mirages here because I can and for no other reason. But are we just gonna win here? Uh, looks like we're just gonna win here, guys. As the mirages chill above and slaughter all the things, I'm just separating the waves, sitting on top of the base here for so long. <sighs> oh, oh, they lived, barely, but they lived. Good thing my wave is coming up next to redo the same thing that we just did and push them all the way back. Oh dear. Oh good, the secret missiles didn't land on my mirages. Uh, strike Goliaths are good for some mirages because it stun locks the mirages. Um, unfortunately, I have more mirages than they have um, ground units, so everything is going to get lifted into the air, one thing at a time, and then they won't have any ground things anymore. And oh look, here come the phoenixes. And the phoenixes will very quickly all go... Well, nope, nope. Well, I guess sitting in the base turret range is, is not beneficial to the health of my... A bunch of these guys and then line them up later. Okay, you need to go here, you need to go here, you need to go there, there. There we go. We just have a bunch more zealots here and just walk across the field. He's going for more lurkers. Uh, it's an indicator, actually, that I need to go for more phoenixes. Or, not phoenixes, mirages. Because I need to lift them out of the ground, that way my zealots can do things. Also, I should probably get some more observers just to make sure that they can be seen at all times. Let me go ahead and do that, get a second observer, kind of move it somewhat toward the front. And one thing that I'm confident about is, even if the phoenixes don't technically do the most damage, and sure, they're not the most ideal thing to have at all times, just the fact that my enemies are forced to deal with them means that they are able to they're, they're forced into building units that my mirages or that my teammates are then able to to counter it makes it makes the enemies predictable it makes them predictable in a way that my teammates can can work with uh oh are we just i think we're gonna win here this should this alpha strike should just kind of go on second shot and there it is gg Alright, so last round was pretty quick, and I want to give you guys a little bit more of an experience with <laughs> playing around with the, the, the hearts and minds of, of the enemies here and making them all salty and stuff. We actually didn't have a whole lot of salt last round, which, uh, to be clear, I don't actually want people to be angry. It's no fun for anyone. I just want to show off which, what this strategy is. It looks like we do have another Carex on the team, uh, starting off with four Sentinels. And what else do we have here? Uh, looks like we've got three characters here. Uh, so uh, either either this is just a time where people really want to abuse this, or I'm not sure what's going on here. But we're gonna we're gonna figure it out pretty quickly. So let's go straight up to tech level two here and start start moving around. It looks like their first wave person has let the team down and has not contested in the middle. And I will be facing off against one Dahaka, and I'm okay with this. So let's see, I don't believe we win this. I think Dahaka wins this, actually. I know he just used his, uh, his Devour ability on one of the other Zealots, but I think he wins this. Uh... No, no, we win this for sure, because our dudes still have to resurrect. Okay. Oh, alright, so we've got two Dahakas. Alright. Alright, come on. Come on, finish it. Okay, he's gone. Alright, uh, yeah, we're gonna need more Zealots. Dahaka is not something that can be lifted into the air by the uh, mirages, so we gotta we gotta zealot him out, take the bait, make him make him try to do something that counters the zealots, and then we we switch into the mirages and just kind of decimate his wave. That's the idea here. Are they triple Dahaka? Oh my lord! It's triple Dahaka versus triple Carex. All right, did not expect. Uh, all right, so we're we're doing this. Okay, uh, in that case. More power to us, then. Uh, so, let's see. What are my teammates going for? Zealots. He's going for Tech 2. You are already Tech 2. We own the middle, which means we have a significantly stronger economy. Remember, guys, uh, whenever you own the middle, you gain uh, you gain plus one mineral per second, which is equivalent to two assimilators. So, we're basically sitting on a three gas economy right now just because we built Zealots and their first teammates did not build their Dahaka unit to start with. That's that's actually how this works, so ha, ha ha. I'm happy with this. Uh, looks like Red has gone for tech level 3. 
Um, I should build some Annihilators here because of that ability. It does 200 damage. Which is a quick way, as you guys see, of clearing out the Dahaka. Let's go ahead and build this guy right here. Go. Yes. With the Rabbisaurs. Alright, we need, we need more Zelots. Let's go do this one. And then this to help the reconstruction. And then just get a bunch more Zelots in here. Yeah, he's, he's not building any AoE just yet, so we could swarm all this down with Zelots. I think would be an excellent solution. Remember the 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 worms here. The yes, they hit hard. They do 50 damage per shot, but they are temporary. Our zealots also resurrect, bringing them back up to 150 effective HP. Will this come off cooldown? It will not. My red teammate uh, still only with the one zealot, but he's going tier three. So we'll, I'm sure, have some massive power spike out of him fairly soon. Get a couple more zealots. Uh, right now, I'm just gonna go mass mass zealot. We'll bring out the uh, infuriatingly. Uh, invulnerable units a little bit later. There we go. I'm kind of hoping one of them goes Muta, or at least I'm kind of hoping my counterpart goes Muta. That way I can bring out bring out the Mirages for more than just the lifts. Not that they have bad lifts. Let's go ahead and also get another simulator. I'm really looking forward to seeing what our teammate does here. He's saving up to 1,200 minerals, so this is a strategy we've seen a few times. No, he is not AFK. What he's doing is he's waiting for them to commit and then countering them super hard with that amount. Oh, he just spent it into carriers. Oh, uh, that's another option, just saving up for mass carrier all at once. There we go. So now we'll see what Orange has specced into. Orange has specced into a bunch of Rabbasaurs. Not a bad idea. Uh, they're cheap. They, they don't require a lot of commitments. And they deal some good damage. But uh, it just means that they will do nothing while while they get slaughtered by these by the carriers. Let's go ahead and start doing this too. More Zealots. Of course, their Dihakas do have options here, uh, from Mass Roach to Roach Hydra. Even a couple of Impalers would go a long way. They haven't built any Impalers yet. Uh, a couple of Impalers, while they will go a long way, won't solve the problem. Because, ooh, there it is. There are the Primal Igniters. Now, this will clean up many, many Zots, but that's why I wanted to have a couple of Annihilators in the background. Yeah. Yeah, just two primal ladders, not enough. Look, it's the zealots. The line of zealots is still still unbroken. Okay, let's go ahead and get some more immortals here. Gotta clear out their dahakas. Their dahakas are stacking, which is real bad. They've got a lot of HP, and we do not want to be dealing with that. Okay, there is the creeper host out of what was that? Was that yellow or orange? I think that was orange. Creeper hosts, basically Baneling spawners, work very well versus a mass zealot, but fail horribly versus the mass mirage. And that's what I'm really hoping that we can bait my yellow Dahaka counterpart into going into creeper hosts. That way we can mass mirage and just wipe out his wave forever. Ron, are you the one of the creeper hosts? I don't think so. I think you just built more hydras. Ron? I know you did build more igniters. There we go. Let's go ahead and get plus one ground weapons. Okay, we're clearing out the Dahaka unit itself. The igniters are still doing good work versus the zealots. Alright, we need some more some more of these guys. If we can burn down the uh, Dahaka, because he's using Dahaka as a tank. If we burn him down super fast using the immortal ability or the annihilator ability. Yeah, these are orange. Rip. If we can burn him down using the Annihilator ability, then our Zealots will be able to, to do all the damage in the world, as well as the Immortals coming in to, to clean up the clean up the Igniters. Because remember, the Igniters, while they are big, they are tanky, and they deal basically they act like a fire bat. They deal AOE fire damage to all of my Zealots with extra damage versus light. Uh, they are armored, and they die horribly to your annihilators. You can see here just his few annihilators just clean them up. But the one thing that stops this from happening is that is Dahaka is big and out in the open. So it kind of tanks for a while and my immortals get stuck on him. So to prevent that from happening I just need to have enough immortals to burn him down all at once. And then suddenly, suddenly the immortals can clean up 
clean up all of these igniters without too much of an issue and let the zealots do the rest of the work and that i'm hoping will convince this tahaka to go for to go for something that's a bit more vulnerable to to mass mass mirage yep yep i think what's also happened here is <laughs> they weren't expecting we had so many zealots between this guy and myself, this immortal, or sorry, zealot, zealot immortal composition, that all three Dahakas kind of built to deal with zealots immortal, and forgot about the carrier. So when he started off the carrier spam, that they were fartsy with the hold the change. So now we're just, now everyone's just in a bad way. Let's go ahead and take this off autocast. Nope. Already, too late, too slow, but we're just gonna walk over him anyways. Yeah, there we go. Welcome to the power of Carex. Alright, so now these basically flying banelings will do a lot of damage to my ground forces. Ooh, someone got an energizer. Nice, they're energizing my immortals. Oh, are our barriers off cooldown? Because that would be great. That ah, doesn't matter. They got distracted by the, the, the primal worms. Oh well. Let's go ahead and get a bunch of these guys to help deal with their backline. Go phasing armor. Get this upgrade because it's cheap and do a couple of defense if they ever manage to come back. Not that I expect them to. I do like the idea of getting a couple of energizers. I think it's more important at this point to get just more annihilators because the annihilator ability uh, provides an alpha strike that just kind of decimates everything. Uh, let's go ahead and take this off cooldown real quick so I could focus on the next Dahaka that spawns. I don't want them using it on. These things. There we go. One, two, three, four, and put it back to put it back to auto cast to clean everything else up. There we go. And now we're on their base, and that will be it. Bye, friends. All right, guys. If you want to see more shenanigans here, more memes, more spams, let's go ahead and hit that subscribe button because we're gonna have a live stream of StarCraft Direct Strike coming up with you guys, the community, pretty soon. So make sure to uh, make sure to join the community Discord down below, and I'll see you guys next time.